Welcome to a short video on how to revise effectively for your GCSE literature paper. It's a strange world at the moment and you're probably feeling similar to this adorable red panda. Relaxed, you may be the picture of a repugnant sloth on your sofa at home. And while it's really important that you take some time out to process the situation that you're in at the moment, I really want you to be mindful that your GCSE exam is in 12 months time. And I really hope that you will not mirror Mr. Bean's reaction in your GCSE exam. I'm sure you remember saying many, if not all of these statements at some stage in the last six months. Oh, I know how to revise. I just read over my notes. I'll just read through it, it'll be fine. Look, miss, miss, I've been really busy. Come and have a look at all my highlighting. How amazing are these colour codes? You see, it's all coordinated. Or how about, yeah, I've done my home learning, got nothing to do really, under control. Or perhaps it's way too early to revise. That's 12 months away. Mm, no, if I start revising now, you see, it'll be pointless because I'll just forget it anyway. So if you have said any of these statements, this video is, is aimed at you. And the purpose of this video is to give you some practical action, some steps for you to complete when you revise. It's not gonna be a lecture about the importance of revising. Let's be fair, if you're watching this, you've probably already got that message. This video is more about giving you the information about what works with revision, what works based on the actual science and on the evidence. It's not what you think works, it's not what you feel comfortable with, but it's based on strategies that have been studied and have been tested and have been proven effective. So let us begin with the why it's so important to actually start your revision now and not wait until September or October or November. So your GCC literature. You should be aware by now that there are two papers. Paper one, one hour 45. You'll be examined on your Shakespeare. For most, if not all, that will be your Macbeth. And your 19th century text, Christmas Carol. Shakespeare is an extract question and that basically means that you're required to examine an extract such as what you see on the screen in detail for part A and then you're asked to refer to the play as a whole for part B. For example we can see here that this extract has been taken from Act 1 Scene 5 and part A requires you to look at how Shakespeare presents Lady Macbeth as a powerful woman in this extract and then how she presents, how he, excuse me, presents Lady Macbeth as a powerful woman in the play as a whole. So just a reminder of some implications for you revising Macbeth. Part B of this question requires you to know the text as a whole and that's a major implication for you because you have to be able to track the key themes and to track character development because it's not just enough for you to have like a really good knowledge and understanding about a few events of the play. For example, it's not okay for you to know Act 1 really well but then not have any real knowledge of the events relating to character or theme development in Act 3. So your understanding of the play as a whole is crucial. Likewise with the Christmas Carol. You can see here another extract question and you're asked to start with the extract, how does Dickens present Scrooge as an outsider? And then part B, how does Dickens present Scrooge as an outsider to society in the novel as a whole? So given the nature of the questions on paper one, it's obvious that this exam places considerable demands on your working memory in the exam, in a very tight time constraints, you're required to examine an extract, recall information, form an argument, and then respond to that argument in a cogent response in a very tight time constraints. You can do this, 
And the way for success here is your knowledge and recall of the text has to be really secure. Moving on to paper two, two hour 15. There are three components to this exam. Your modern prose, Lord of the Flies, or Inspector Cord, modern drama. Your scene poetry, which will be your anthology poetry. For everyone except for my guys, you study power and conflict. My guys are lucky enough to do love and relationships with me. I can see your jazz hands waving now. And they're 15 poems each, right? But then you've got unseen poetry. You'll be given a poem that you have not studied before and you will be asked to analyse how language and structural methods have been used by the poet to explore an idea or a feeling. And then you need to then compare that poem with another poem, which is also unseen. So for the modern prose question, uh, I've given an example on the screen now, you are given a choice of two. But in this occasion, you are not provided with an extract to guide you with your initial response. Same poetry for love and relationships cluster. You are provided with a poem and then you're asked to compare this poem with one other poem from the cluster and a sample poem from Power and Conflict. So what I've given you here are just two samples, just to give you a bit of a flavour about the style of questions with your anthology poems. Unseen poetry, typically a smaller poem. And then part B, you're asked to compare the poem Autumn with the poem today, looking at the similarities and the differences. So, uh, you're probably feeling a little bit nervous at the moment because you've probably got a vision in front of you um, which is quite a steep mountain. Don't worry, you, you can do this, you have this, and together we have this. I need to keep reminding you that this is a revision program that will take you through 12 months. You're not expected to do this over four weeks. Little and often, with the right program. This is why we need to start revising now. So where do you actually start? Think of this as your foundation to say a house. Okay, now this, um, what I've got here is five key points that have come from the previous two years examiner's report. And time and time again, the examiners have said, you need to know the text. Now, that, I know that sounds like a really redundant thing to say after what I've just been highlighting. You need to know the text as a whole to compare the character or the plot or the thematic development. But you need to reread the book. You need to reread Lord of the Flies. You need to go back through and read Macbeth. You need to go back through and read your poetry. You cannot be expected to be a, um, an expert on a text and to provide sophisticated responses if you read Chapter 10 six months ago during period six and your focus wasn't great to begin with. So reread the text. If you're struggling to do that, grab the audio book. You can go out for one healthy walk a day, put it on, go for a stroll. For Shakespeare, why don't you go to um, the different productions and adaptations? At the moment, the BBC iPlayer is showing um, a recent adaptation from the Royal Shakespeare Company, which was superb. And there are multiple examples that you can get a hold online with. Second point that the examiners say is that you need to understand that the text is a construct of an author's intent. You need to obviously avoid the narrative the whole point of these exams is not for you to retell the events or points of interest. It's for you to show an understanding of how and why methods are used to explore a broader idea. You need to know the context and remember that context is the time and the place in which the text was written. But you don't want to bolt on your context at the end of a paragraph. 
Instead, you need to use the context to explain potentially the rationale for different characters' choices. So if I take Macbeth, for example, and you, you're, you're interested into why he reacted the way that he did to the witches, then you need to be aware of um, the beliefs at the time with witchcraft and during Jacobean England, how a contemporary audience would have responded to the witches. That's how you embed your context. I'll come back to this again and again, but it's little and often. Start rereading Lord of the Flies. Spend 15 minutes a day rereading it. Start rereading or watch Macbeth. 15 minutes a day. So, what is revision and why is it important? Let's look at this graph illustrating the typical forgetting curve for newly learned information. Let's have a look here. When you first learn content, 100% retention. One day later, 80%. When it's reviewed at day one, and then reviewed at day three, and then reviewed at day six. The more frequently you return to your information and the more frequently it is reviewed, it embeds into your long-term memory. And that's what revision is. It's the process where all your information is reviewed frequently. And by reviewing it frequently, it then moves into your long-term memory. And that's where we need your knowledge to be so that in 12 months time, you can recall a quotation and it's at the front. So how do you revise effectively? You've got an understanding now of what needs to be revised. You've got your foundation sorted because you're going to be returning to a second or third reading of Lord of the Flies poetry Macbeth. How do you actually go about the revising? So the actual steps. Now, there are six approaches that are recommended by the learning scientists, and they're a team of cognitive um, uh, scientists that are interested in the science of learning. And I highly recommend that you check out their website. I'll show it to you now. Here we go. Uh, they've got a, I've, I've, I'm on the section here that is, um, particularly for you, for students. And there are a lot of different posts down here on time management, how to improve it. A little post on there on the 27th of March with um, learning from video. Uh, if we scroll down a little bit more, bottom right hand side here, how to choose the right ways to study for you, advice for students. So there are lots of different articles in here that gives you just a little bit more depth than what I'm going through with you now. This website, I highly recommend for you to sit down, have a scroll through. This is where I'm getting the six approaches from. If you have a look in this navigation menu over here you can see that there are podcasts as well which are awesome and there's a section in here for um, your parents too so you can have a chat with your mum and dad about what you're doing and why you're doing it it's actually really very interesting um right i get back to where i was so here we go learning scientists they have six effective ways to revise so we've got obviously spaced practice, retrieval practice, elaboration, interleaving, concrete examples and dual coding. And these are the six components that I'm going to be talking through with you now. And if you use a blend of all the six, your revision is active and it's effective. So let's begin. Oh, I should have shown you that screen before, shouldn't I? That would have been a lot easier for you. That's okay. You can pause it now and have a read back through if you want to. But frankly, well done for sticking with me so far. I'm well aware of how I sound over video. Here we go, retrieval practice, woohoo. So let's start here. 
Retrieval practice is basically where you practice bringing all your information to mind and retrieval practice is is the key, if you think of it, to unlock all of your successful revision. All the other strategies are linked to effectively retrieving the information from your long term memory. So this is something that you need to be doing on a daily or alternate daily basis. So retrieval practice, how do you do it? You put away your class materials. You write or your sketch everything that you know, be as thorough as possible, then check your class materials for accuracy and check the important points that you missed. So let's take your anthology poems. How about you complete this activity and you take no more than 10 minutes. You take out a clean poem from your poetry anthology, uh, say Winter Swans for Love and Relationships, say Bayonet Charge for Power and Conflict, and you sketch or you annotate everything that you can recall from that poem. Then you take out your anthology and you compare what you have done previously in class and with home learning, and then you identify the important points that you miss. Now, here's, here's the most important part of this process is you have to identify the important parts that you missed. Now, this review is crucial because it identifies your areas of weakness. And if you've got an area of weakness, that's what you use for your flashcards. So flashcards, you can go old school or you can use Quizlet. Just letting you read through what's on the screen before I move on. I always recommend to my students that once you do your flashcards and when you have them in a physical sense, you can start making links across the key quotations and you can start making those links that are connected to themes. So there are lots of different platforms that you can choose for um, electronic uh, flashcards. I would recommend Quizlet because this particular app um, the retrieval practice is not passive and um, I, you have to actively think and engage and reflect. Now, that it gives you a couple of options when you're on Quizlet and I'll just give you a little bit of a demonstration here to um, illustrate my point. So I've got my love and relationships cluster poetry up here and I've got 105 uh, flashcards that I've made because I live a wild life and um, these are the awesome things that I like to do that and eat lint white chocolate um, always a great way to show your appreciation of the video that i've made but here we go when we do parted flashcards simple right you've all seen this before blah 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 as you go through right that's not the exciting part you can go into the learn function here which i quite like and hopefully this will yeah we're quite speedy okay so we have a couple of questions and then we've got our potential answers down here so if we don't necessarily want to go with there we can go with write spell and you can test yourself um, or you can do a match so you can play a game against yourself and it gives you a chance to move all of your different components around if you aren't quite fancying that you can do a gravity game where you can go through get started yes i'd like to actually i want to make quite hard this time and do i want to answer with a definition or how about i just go random right let's go with that yes red asteroids off we go and now we're going to have some questions coming down and then of course you've got a time bonded amount of time in which to do that and then you accrue points and then you compete against yourself or others and um you can have a rocking time there. Even better, click the live function. And now that you've got time on your hands, you can do remote live Quizlet. How cool would that be? So that is Quizlet and it's free. So what I like about this in particular, like I said before, is that it gives you options to actively think about what you're doing and to play a game and to have fun. And it's not passive. Now, at this stage, you've got to think to yourself, is what I'm doing right now hard, but am I getting the answers mostly accurate? And if that's the case, then what you're doing is what is what you're doing is working because retrieval practice should be difficult.
So another element of retrieval practice is to take on as many practice tests as you can. If you don't have ready-made ones, which you do, I'll show you some cracking examples. Try and make your own and trade with a friend who has done the same. So what I've got here is Educate, which, um, or you can go to Seneca Learning. I really like Educate because you can, oh, I can't show you that example. Sorry, it's not there. What I really like about Educate is that it is a great piece of formative assessment in that it shows you where you answer incorrectly. Because quite often I hear students say, I've done all this revision, but I don't know what I don't know. In other words, I don't know if I'm missing major components. I don't know if I'm misunderstanding major components. Educate is really effective because it highlights to you which questions you got wrong and how many times you got them wrong. And it gives you a chance to go back. And perhaps it may be that you got questions 1, 8 and 16 wrong. And it turns out that 1, 8 and 16 are all connected to a theme. So that's your area of weakness that you know you need to build on. In which case, you go back to your Quizlet and you do some more work on the themes which you which you were not correct on in your Educate. Seneca Learning is great, don't get me wrong. It's a good knowledge um, builder and it's great for um, any gaps that you may have with your knowledge. But Educate gives you something a little bit more because it identifies your areas of weakness and your areas of strength and that allows you to target your revision further. Okay, second component, space to practice. This is basically, well, it's quite self-explanatory really, you space out your revision over time and you really need to think about your revision timetable and do it properly with mum and or dad with an understanding of uh, what happens within your household as well. No point in you doing a revision timetable when you realise that on a particular night you're supposed to sit down for an hour and something important is going on in the family and that's not going to be possible. So space practice is where you start planning early, i.e. now, 12 months ahead, and you set aside a little bit of time every day, as I said before, little and often. Five hours spread out over two weeks is better than five hours all at once. Don't do that to yourself. It would be like wanting to jam a pin into your eyeball. Don't sit down for five hours all at once. As much as I know you love Macbeth, that isn't going to be productive. Instead, chunk your time out, 20 minutes, five minute break, 20 minutes, five minute break, 20 minutes, five minute break. That amount of time set out over the course of two weeks is going to be so much more effective and valuable because you're going to be fresh and you're going to be able to think hard. Okay. Of course, review your information from classes, but try not to do it immediately after class. If you do it immediately after class, you might have a false memory and you might be recalling from your short term memory and that might give you an illusion that you're um, a, a lot more proficient than what you actually are. The best way to make sure that you're doing this effectively is to create a revision timetable. Now, this is a revision timetable and a great site for you to get to. And this is for all of your subjects. I'm going to talk a little bit more about specifically English in a moment, but this is for all of your subjects. This will avoid the panic. This will avoid the overload. Although it probably doesn't look like that at the moment because there's a lot on that timetable. Okay. Elaboration. Is as it says, explain, describe ideas with detail. This is basically your mind maps. So how you do it, as you elaborate, you make connections between different ideas and you explain, really important, you explain how they work together. Take two ideas from A Christmas Carol, for example. You can go with uh, redemption as one key idea, for example, and then link it with another idea in ways that are similar or different. Redemption. 
This is an example from a uh, blog. This is not one of my students and this is not mine. Uh, it just gives you an idea on how to make connections across the novella as a whole, taking in and tracking Scrooge's redemption throughout the novella. An example of elaborating on a point, connecting through to a theme, tracking across the novella as a whole. Now, this is Amy Skinner's, uh, my, one of my previous students. She created this amazing example of um, the love and relationships cluster, originally mind mapped, elaborated on, and then placed onto one page where she made connections. Now, what you can't quite see in here, and hopefully I'll be able to just briefly illustrate here, is what she has done is she has color coded which is very exciting by the way she has color coded with her titles so that she's aware of the poems which connect together she's done that at different points as you can see here and what she has also done that you can't see the detail of very deliberately because i can't be giving all of this good stuff away to to you guys you have to make this yourself the key quotations and why they are key quotations and you'll notice that they are also color coded and they're color coded so that she can recall one quotation and link it to another poem that is similar or different a wonderful example of elaboration creating links this particular mind map started off i'm sure you could see this now as individual flashcards. Then she made links between them and then she elaborated on them. So interleaving. I told you I'd come back to interleaving, which is basically when you switch between topics as you study. So we're just in on English, for example, and we're going to interleave a little bit of Lord of the Flies with a little bit of Macbeth with a little bit of um, poetry, and then we're going to go back to Lord of the Flies and then back to Macbeth. Now, what you don't want to do is stay in one topic for too long. So as you see here, maybe 20 minutes on topic A, 20 on B, 20 on C, for example. Now, what I've got here is a interleaved timetable that my guys used leading up to their mock exams. So hopefully what you can see here is on Monday for 10 minutes. Remember, little and often, 10 minutes. In the first week, they learn quotations about Ralph. And then on the Tuesday, they jump online and they do a, um, a clip on the context of Macbeth. Then they do some poetry. This is um, Power and Conflict. So this is one of my other classes that I shared. Then on Thursday, they do a quiz. And then on Saturday, they apply it in an essay. Sunday, some reading on the VLE. I'll talk to you about that later. Now, what you can see here is that on Tuesday, Macbeth, quiz on Macbeth, and then applying Macbeth. What I didn't ask them to do is just spend all of Monday doing Macbeth. You can see here a Christmas Carol, Marley's Ghost, Essay, Marley's Ghost Context, Quiz, Essay the following week. So this is what's known as interleaving. And you'll notice little and often, 10 minutes, you can totally do that. 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 15 minutes, and then one essay on the weekend. Make sure with your interleaving, you're going back to your ideas in different orders to strengthen your understanding, just as I showed you in that example a moment ago.
really important with your interleaving it's a very successful technique to embed into your long-term memory and it's good to switch between ideas but please be mindful that you don't switch too often otherwise you're going to be all levels of confused make sure that you quiz in between those phases as indicated on my timetable a moment ago to make sure that you're still working accurately it's going to feel harder but that's the whole point because if it's harder and you're building your accuracy that's where you make progress so stick with it this isn't going to be easy it's going to con um, increasingly get more and more challenging as you go through concrete examples that's basically uh, modeled examples from your teacher i.e essays that have been written by previous students collect as many as you can use the opportunities that your teacher gives you of um, worked examples from your class use the opportunities during your dirt activities to take photos of other people's work use the opportunities when your teacher gives you past exam papers and parts past work samples to understand how you construct an argument why not start now in sharing your essays with a remote learning study buddy perfect chance for you to do that now jump on a platform talk to each other share your ideas ultimately when you're creating your own relevant examples that's when you're going to be advancing your learning even further and that is your dirt that's why we always stress the importance of the invaluable feedback that you get back from your teachers and then you acting on your dirt you're very proficient at this you've been doing this since year seven this is why it's so important dual coding it's basically a fancy way to use words and visuals to help you recall information. You take the information that you're trying to learn and you draw visuals to go along with it. Really interesting science behind this that you can go back onto the Learning Scientist. And um, there's a couple of uh, podcasts uh, from about a year ago that you can scroll through and listen to um, why uh, dual coding is such an effective way of revising when used in combination with these other methods. So this is not mine. Um, I've got this from a teaching platform. Quotations from Macbeth and then a really simple icon on the side. Of course, this is going to be much more powerful when you come up with the images rather than somebody provides it for you when you've got your dual coding there look at the visuals and then you can explain in your own words what they mean so the process here is articulating and discussing it with somebody uh, with you to then elaborate on your ideas another idea with dual coding is not just having a having an icon or a symbol to represent a quotation but maybe come up with different ways for example a timeline or different parts of a diagram that work together and I've got an example here that um, is not mine that's come from a website from Paul M. Goss with a Christmas Carol, top right hand corner, squeezing, wrenching, grasping, covetous old sinner, decrease the surplus population, solitary, neglected, and it takes you through the plot points. I'm as light as a feather down to the end there. So well done for sticking with me. A review of some key points. Plan and structure using the six strategies. You've got to be planning, making sure you've got a balance of all six. It's not enough just to do flashcards. It's not enough just to do mind maps. It's not enough just to do dual coding. It's not enough to see worked examples. You've got to use all of them in a balanced approach. Little and often, remember, chunking out your times, 20 minutes break, 20 minutes break. 
there is a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful set of resources which has been led by uh, the English department, primarily by Mr Benton, posting numerous, numerous uh, short reading on the VLE. Please go there and have a look. There is some... Here we go. There we go. Thank you, Mr. Venton, for posting all of these, as you can see. 20 minutes once a week. Reading outside will only enhance your ability for inference and analysis. Put your smartphone away. Make sure you're focused. Make sure you're thinking hard. And remember, you can do this and we can do this. It's 12 months away and if you do little and often and you plan, you can do this. Thank you very much for listening. Again, you can always show appreciation with white lint chocolates. My guys know all about that. Thank you very much. Take care of yourself and others around you and be kind to your mum and or dad and go and make them a cup of tea. Hopefully see you soon.